Hello everyone, Chamantin here. So uh, today, first of all, I'm using a new software. I'm just trying it out um, to make my videos so you can kind of see me and uh, and this desktop at the same time. Um, so today I'm showing you how to install Splunk. Uh, before installing it though, I want to explain what Splunk is and why it's important um, for the enterprises uh, not necessarily to have Splunk, but something like Splunk. So Splunk is a platform that brings big data learning and machine learning and stuff like that um, to the traditional syslog and monitoring software. So the first, the first uh, thing uh, to realize is that we have hundreds and sometimes thousands of devices on our network and each one of them generates data um, especially log data so routers and switches will have you know uh, errors that they generate say uh, you know for example before your user um, complains about let's say slow speeds um, and there was a speed and duplex mismatch now traditionally even if we had a syslog server, you'd have to go into a syslog server and you'd have to scan through, you know, tons and tons of logs if it was even put onto a syslog server. Or you'd have to log into that specific device and check it out. Now, something like that, uh, you wouldn't think of, wouldn't think of it. But, um, say... Uh, as another example, you're using, uh, you're, you're running a web app or uh, Active Directory or something like that. And one of your servers uh, or a cluster of servers for that matter, something's going on and uh, your users can't log in anymore. Well, by the time you get a call, there's already tons of data that's been generated uh, those login failures, the reason why um, they failed, stuff like that, the servers have already um, generated. And so now you have to go into the servers. If it's Windows, you have to go into the application log and figure it out. If it's Linux, you got to go into auth.log and all this stuff. Um, but with Splunk and uh, apps like Splunk, what we can do is do log analysis across the entire enterprise. So what we can do is uh, run machine learning and algorithms and stuff like that to learn and to gather all this data and generate an alert based on that. Um, and it can you can get really into it. So you know for network outages, we can correlate certain network outages to um, to geographical areas for security, especially of course uh, in, in the security realm like you've learned a lot of on my channel, logs are everything. Uh, login failures, login successes, um, uh, you know, the successful execution of a file and stuff like that. And so what we can do with all this data, especially in the security realm, is find um, patterns, okay? Because patterns sometimes are the key. Uh, so, you know, if we see that we have a specific IP or specific user and it's going all over the place, you know, is it uh, legitimate? Is it not? You know, um, if it's a ransomware. Okay, so in the case of ransomware, we've talked about how uh, ransomware's goal is to access every single file. So how about if we found out, and, and normally it takes a, a while, so we'll, we'll actually have time. So what if we see all of a sudden the specific users accessing hundreds of thousands of files or thousands of files, um, you know, faster than humanly possible and modifying those files? Well, we can set up an alert to trigger maybe another action to stop that or to let the security team know. Uh, you know, that's just an example. Um, it Splunk is used in a lot of enterprises and even medium-sized businesses. It's free. Uh, well, they have a free tier. They have a paid-for tier. 
Um, you can download little apps that integrate, you know, with Cisco or Sophos or, or Checkpoint, I believe, has one. There's machine learning applications, um, and it's all based on big data. So uh, this is another uh, realm in the IT field or the, um, you know, the machine that is IT that uh, big data is helping. Okay. So... To begin, uh, first thing I'll do is I'll show you how to install it. So I just have a, ver uh, a clean install of Debian here. And uh, then I'll show you an environment that is kind of already established that I already have with some devices and stuff. And I'll show you some basic searches. I'm still not a Splunk expert. There's a lot of development stuff. Uh, you know, you can run Python scripts and stuff like that. And so um, this isn't a comprehensive. Um, uh, this isn't a comprehensive uh, guide or anything like that. But it should get you launched enough to be able to go and you know build up on what you learned today. Okay, so the first thing I'll have to do is just uh, SCP uh, data. Sorry, the the dot dev file. Okay. as it's not available in the repositories let me just finally get this done here okay so to download Splunk you just go into the page and hit free Splunk and then um, you can download the uh, free there's only one version and uh, then after that you can then um, download uh, sorry like if you choose to buy it you just put in your license key after the fact okay so I'll go over here Splunk just move it over so the installation is quite easy actually so we're just going to do sudo dpkg tack i Splunk Put in your password and it'll go ahead and install. Okay, so we're just waiting here now. Okay. After Splunk is installed, it's located in the OPT, and then you'll see Splunk. Okay, in the bin folder of Splunk, there is um, the scripts for Splunk. So to start it, we'll do sudo Splunk start. Okay, you'll be uh, greeted with uh, license. An EULA, you can read it if you want, and hit Y to accept. Okay. So now um, you'll just we'll serve to one nine two one six eight two dot six. on port 8000 okay so the default login credentials are in front of you it's admin and change me and then it'll ask for a new password okay so just hit new password all right so now that we have this installed this is the dashboard of Splunk so there's a couple of things uh, you'll you'll learn about the Splunk architecture so the first thing this is the main uh, 
this is Splunk, the, the main part. Now, um, if you're using Cisco or something like that and it has a syslog function, right? So let's log into a Cisco uh, switch in this case. If I go logging and then, okay, I've just told my Cisco route, my Cisco switch to point um, syslog info to 192.168.2.6, which is 2.6 here. Now, if I go over to add data, okay. If I go over to add data, I'll have a couple of uh, couple of ways to put data in the system. One is to upload data. So if I had a uh, if I had a file uh, log file or anything like that, I can uh, upload it. You know, just hit upload, and then you know select the log file. Okay, but we want real time. We don't want to do any of that. So we'll hit monitor. So once we hit monitor, we're going to go under TCP slash UDP. Okay. So we'll hit the syslog port of 514. Okay. And then you can put a name and stuff like that. So I just hit next. So then we'll ask for the source type. So, um, from here, you can select, um, you can select, you know, what kind of data it is, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, for instance, you saw one for snort, right? Now, if there is, um, if there is none, you can just do, uh, you can enter one. So, one's Cisco switch okay and the source type okay is network and security and the type description say switch okay. and now um, you have some details here so uh, are we doing so the host okay And now uh, you can just leave that however you want it. Hit review. So we've just created uh, for port 514. And hit submit. Okay. Then you can do, you can click start searching. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't have many events yet, right? We only have one device. But what um, I will do is I will flip over to um, an environment that already has data. So this environment has data. So if I go, so for instance, I'll type in IPS. Okay. I'm able to pull up logs from my firewall. Um, on the IPS solution. Now, what we can do is narrow down what we're looking for. So for instance, if I'm looking for uh, things, logs from my one of my switches, I'll just hit that specific host. And now we'll see, for instance, the interfaces that go up and down, certain changes, um, all that stuff. Okay. Now, I don't have many applications installed yet. There's, I have a couple. Um, so one of them is like Google Maps. So uh, if there's any geolocation data and stuff like that, you can actually feed, if you're looking for a specific IP, public IP address or something like that, you just hit geolocation uh, and there's some strings and stuff that you can feed into um, 
Google Maps and then you plot it on a map exactly, you know, where um, where that IP is coming from, which is useful, especially in security, right? Um, now, so that's the basics on the searching. Now, there's one more thing, and that is, uh, say there's no syslog, okay? Um, what you can do is there's called Splunk Forwarders, a universal forwarder, okay? So the universal forwarder is just an application, like an agent that you install on, you know, Windows server uh, or Linux server, stuff like that. And what that does is allows us to um, it allows us to send data from a server, could be remote or local, stuff like that, over to Splunk. Okay, so I'll show it in, an, in another video on how to install that. Um, I'll set up a server so we can have that um, configured. If you have any questions or comments about Splunk, um, or anything in regards to Splunk, uh, please leave a uh, comment in the section below. You can also email me, uh, sean at seancom or visit my website, seancom uh, So again, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, have a good day.